Why, Apple? Why? Another gig beats dust. Uh, bump. Another gig beats dust. No way, man. Sorry, I screwed that up. Let me try again. Why, Apple? Why? Another gigabyte bites the dust, ha ha. Another gigabyte bites the dust, ha ha. And another gig's gone. Another gig's gone. Another gig bites the dust. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> that's my new version. Um. Yeah, we lost a gigabyte of RAM again. Cheapers, man. I'm telling you, Apple. What are you thinking? Oh well, it's only supposed to be like you know a little update for security and some bug fixes. Yeah, 1.9 gig download. Yeah, how big was that when it installed? Who knows? I don't really care because I've got like a 512 gig um, SSD in my Mac Mini. Because that's why I ordered it along with 16 gigabytes of RAM. So I still got like 340 gigs of hard drive space. Or, oh, sorry. Plenty click crack children out there are going to say SSD. Anyways, whatever. I had three, over 340 gigabytes of drive space left. So it really doesn't affect me for that part. I don't really care anyhow. I got lots of space. Uh, but it does affect the RAM usage. Yesterday when I did that video for you guys on the M2s and why not to buy them, okay, which very valid points and very factual. So, hey, take it for what you will. Your option, your money. Um, but yesterday when I checked my RAM usage, okay, through Activity Monitor, every day I have a routine. I get up in the morning, I fire up my computers, go turn on the kettle so I can get my morning coffee into me so the people get to survive the day, including myself. You know what I mean? You know, give me my coffee. You know what I mean? So I have a routine. Well, this morning my routine got broken and it got really nasty. I fire up my Mac and immediately, oh, no OS update. Hmm, 13.2.1. How much RAM am I going to lose this time? I thought to myself. That was my first thought, and I was right. Yesterday, I was chewing up just shy of four gigabytes of RAM just to get to the desktop. Now, to find this information out, you go into your computer and you find a little program called Activity Monitor, and you launch it, and you select Memory tab up top. You let the thing sit for about five minutes or so. Okay, let all the background garbage load up. Don't have any other apps already open like Chrome or Safari, whatever browser you're using. Just make sure everything is shut down and then you launch your activity, you know. So I always make sure nothing can load in the morning, okay? This way I don't have to worry about nothing because as soon as any apps already preload for you because you've left stuff open, you shut down and preloads, this is where it's going to screw you over because nothing gets released, right? Well, not all the way. So anyhow... So make sure that your computer does not fire any other programs up. You fire up your computer and you fire up Activity Monitor. You walk away for about five minutes. Well, I didn't get to do that this morning. I had to do this OS update first. But at least I knew before I did it, I was less than four gigabytes of RAM just to get to the desktop. Now, Mac or PC kids, you never get this RAM back just because you're running programs. It adds to the amount of available RAM being <laughs> sucked away. Okay, the more crap you got running, the more RAM's going bye byes Okay, so anyways, I did the update, it rebooted, I fired up Activity Monitor, and I actually sat here for five minutes and screwed up my schedule. And I thought, there's no way. This is like, now it's going to actually say a little over five gigs because Activity Monitor chews up 58 megabytes of RAM. That's it, it's all it chews. So yeah, we're at five gigs. So anyway, I thought, no way. So I reboot my computer, which clears the memory out of anything else. And you reboot, and away you go, right? So I thought, okay. So I rebooted it myself. Fire up Activity Monitor, and I just walked away. I went, I fired up my kettle. I went for my morning cigarette, did my stuff, come back in here, and I'm chewing an extra gigabyte total of RAM. So I wasn't seeing stuff after all. Now, this has been going kind of back and forth for the last few updates with the Mac OS where, yeah, we're over 5 gigs of RAM, close to 6 in fact. And then all of a sudden, wow, we're down to like 4.5. And, and then we're finally down to 4 gigs and it's been great. You know, not that I'm overly concerned. I have 16 gigs of RAM on my computer and at least when I run my computer, I'm doing one program at a time. That's it, okay? 
So I kind of don't want to go near swap, right? Ever, because swap will burn your drive out fast. All right, faster than what you want to know. We'll talk about that in another video because that's a little more intense than this is. But trust me, you want to avoid swap at all costs. I don't care of the Kool-Aid you were drip fed by the other YouTubers. And some of them are alleged tech channels, but they're clueless. They have no idea what they're talking about. That's the way it is. I call it how I know it. And, you know, I got over 30 years or more into this. I'm pretty sure I know Macs and PCs, okay? So my experience kind of counts for something here. So anyway, I'm like, hmm, interesting. So what was this update about? So I fire up my 2009 iMac, which still goes on the internet, surprisingly enough, and I come across an article from Mac Rumors. It says that, of course, Apple today released Mac OS Ventura 13.2.1. Uh, somebody made a spelling mistake, so we'll just skip to the next part. Um, the update is downloaded for free, of course, as per always. You know, it's kind of nice. Um, and uh, on a Mac that supports... 13.2.1. You can get the update for free, right? Anyways, it says down below here, Mac OS 13.2.1 will be followed by Mac OS 13.3. Not 13.22 or 13.2.3. And they could continue this for a lot of updates before hitting 3. 13.3. No, they just they're just jumping the bandwagon right into 13.3. So that's going to be a pretty big update from the way things have gone this way before in the past. We should be expecting a fair good sized update out of this. Now this update is going to be expected for Apple to hand over that release to the developers as soon as this week. So all the Apple development team that has to work out all the garbage now, <laughs> okay, they're going to be getting to have that fun starting this week. We should get notifications on YouTube at some point from some channel that is going to start talking about this new update, at least in the beta release. Which I tend to not pay attention to those videos anymore because though some of the stuff is very true and accurate, a lot of the other stuff in it generally is not. So I'm just going to kind of probably poke around and listen to the garbage anyway, because like any good boy, I should, just for fun. And then when the update does come, then I'm going to, of course, retest again to verify my RAM suckage. And we're going to probably check on the hard drive, or sorry, SSD, for you little guys that are correcting. Um, and we're going to see how much space we actually lose. Now, currently, of course, without installing any more programs on my main drive, I have a 512 sitting in here. I have 349.41 gigs free right now on my 512. This is my internal, of course, on my Mac Mini. I ordered a 16 by 512. I had to future-proof myself. So, and I do have external, a couple of one terabyte externals and the 480 and so on. So I got lots of drives, you know, for stuff. And I run the majority of my programs on actually external drives. I don't have them on my internal. You know, and if it does run an installer, I install it to the internal and then I take the program itself after it's built itself onto the internal sweep that over to an external, delete it off the internal, and run it off the external, and I have no problems, okay? Works fantastic. Keeps a lot of free space on my internal, too, which cuts down on wear and tear on the SSD, because as you know, SSDs do have a limited lifespan compared to HDDs, which could run for decades in comparison and write more data than an SSD you could ever dream of. However, the bigger the SSD you have, the more terabytes of data can be written to it. So, and we're gonna actually do a dedicated video to that to really explain to you all the ins and outs. Cause I've watched channels about this myself and I'm like, you missed this, you missed this, and you missed this. We need to do our own video to get all the info for you. Okay. And um, so anyways, I'm kind of a person that just does this sort of thing like that. I, I, I'd like to have all the information in, in one basket so that I know what's going on, right? So I can help you guys out. So, yeah, we've lost an extra gigabyte of RAM to the OS. And because we don't get any of that RAM back when we fire up programs, if you have a Mac with 8 gigs of RAM right now, well, you have only 3 gigs free, okay? And that's not a lot of RAM to work with before going into swap. And once you start going into swap, which is virtual memory, by the way, 
I, and so many people explain it in such the wrong way. Any of us techs that actually know and understand what swap really is and how it actually works, I mean, we try to tell you people, but there is not as many Apple techs per se on YouTube as there are wannabe techs, right? So people usually go for the high, higher majority of people that, you know, seem to think they know what they're talking about. But honestly, a lot of stuff they're pretty good on, but other stuff they just go right out to lunch. So we have to straighten this out, you know. So anyways, and many people you already know who I am, what I'm about. But if you don't, because you're new, I am a certified Apple tech. I have been for over 30 years and also a PC technician for not quite 30 years yet. But we're approaching that number soon. So I've got a lot of years of experience at this, but I also have years more experience even previous to the becoming a technician. I started with computers in about 1981-82, right? And I started with Apple computers were my first. And back in that day it was before the Mac was actually released to the public, okay? And um, I, I love the, the journey and the history of Apple computers and you know, and when I found out when the Mac OS was actually starting to be developed back in the 70s, I was like, seriously, it started that early? And it was an employee that started this whole thing. I think we need a graphical interface, which did actually come out too. Uh, for um, We were able to get it to run on the 2E, but also the 2GS had its own. And the 2GS became an extremely powerful Apple II computer because of that graphic interface, but it could also still run a lot of the older Apple II software as well under the whole, we got to type crap now just to get to something, right? And make things run. Be run this, you know, on good old days. Um, but this, now it's all click, 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 click. I love it. But anyways, so with that being said, expect another following update from Apple 13.3. That I believe is going to be a pretty big update. I'm hoping I'm wrong, but it from the sounds of things and the way Apple usually does their number systems for versions, that's looking like a pretty big jump, okay? Um, so I'm expecting to probably lose more RAM again. Um, I don't think we're going to see 4 gigs of RAM in usage anymore uh, after today, but one can always hope, I guess. Uh, we have to see how things, how things work out. But if you do have a machine with 8 gigs of RAM right now, please consider selling it and ordering a new computer that has at least 16 or more gigabytes of RAM, okay? And even a 16 gigabyte Mac right now that only has the capability, like the Mac Mini M1, the MacBook Air, the iMac, these still can only handle 16 gigs max, okay? You should, in theory, crossing fingers, should be fine with a 16 gigabyte configuration for at least, at least another three years depending upon what you do with that Mac, okay? Because remember, you need to avoid going into swap at all costs because that goes to the internal. There is no way to tell a Mac to use an external drive source as virtual swap, okay, for virtual memory. It all is done on the internal drive, and that drive is part of that SOC garbage, which, okay, there's good points to this stuff, but anyway... It burns out, it burns out, your computer is done, okay? If you're off warranty, you buy a new computer. If you're under the Apple Care Plus warranty or Apple Care warranty, the original, so you're within a year, you should never burn out an SSD in any Mac within a year, but I guess it could be done. But if you got your Apple Care Plus either way, one way or another, you're going to get the thing fixed or replaced, you know, um, and that's fine. But SSD technology... And I will say this again, and I will say it again when we do the dedicated video to this. SSD technology is not yet anywhere close to being where it needs to, to handle the pounding and rigorous wear and tear that virtual memory slash swap does to an SSD drive. Okay? But, unfortunately, this is what we have to deal with, and we have to learn how to stay out of swap. Now, you can learn to stay out of swap with an eight gigabyte configuration of RAM. However, it does mean some sacrificing of how you use your computer, which we will also do a separate dedicated video to that too, okay? In the meantime, thank you so much for watching and hanging out. Hope you enjoyed the video and you got a good laugh out of that intro because um, I kind of had fun doing it. And we'll see you on the next one, okay?
So take care and see ya.